All right, Gene. Ready in Hamesh. Alba, Shalosh, Steim. Where my mom's wearing thongs, hitting bongs at Raising kids, cleaning shits, need a long nap Where my mom's, where my mom's, where my mom's at Where my mom's at podcast Now, 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 now With Christina P Oh, welcome to my show and with me is Jessica Curson. She's got 20 kids like a rapper <laughs> And she works her little butt off Welcome, Jessica I'm so, I love that song. Thank you. I know we paid um, DMX like five hundred thousand dollars to do it before he died. Really? Yeah. Number one, I yeah. don't know if I should believe that story. And number two, <laughs> I didn't know that DMX died. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're a cool, mom. Did now he you know. die? That's why we're here to teach you all the hip stuff that the kids are into. Yeah, he died. He died a while ago. Oh, how long right? ago? How long ago did DMX die, guys? I think we we slipped in. We got him to do that song and then he... Yeah, maybe six months ago or something. I feel like it was a year. Maybe a year. year. It's like a year ago. How did he die? Writing that song. <laughs> Performing. I, I don't know why I just thought that was so funny. Yeah. <laughs> you asked him to what? write that song. He's like, I'm going to fucking kill myself. <laughs> Like, what? <laughs> what? Uh, this is where my career ended up. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking mom podcast song. He's like, how much money? <laughs> hey, let's do some dates at the top, you guys. Jessica Curson is with us. And if you don't know who this bitch is, you need to get your damn life. She is uh, the funniest human being. <laughs> oh. I absolutely adore you. You're so goddamn hilarious. Thank you. And um, let me, I'll do my dates first because I'm. <laughs> hey. Hello. Uh, when are we doing? This is May 18th here in Cap City. I'm going to start working that club. It's going to open soon. I can't wait. And then Irv- Irvine. <laughs> Irvine. <laughs> Irvine, California, May 20th to 21st. Atlantic City, New Jersey at the Borgata, June 4th, oh. June 5th. Boston, massive, huge tits at the Wilbur. Tickets are almost <laughs> gone for that one. July 15th and 16th. Washington, uh, D.C., July 29th and 30th. Uh, two nights in San Francisco, one one night only in Seattle at the Neptune. That's almost gone. So go get those. Cleveland coming up on the board. I think I do Minneapolis tits. That one was rescheduled for <laughs> August 26th and 27th. Gashville, on and on. Christina P. <laughs> online.com. Jessica, where can people find your live dates? They You need to see Jessica curse on live. So here's the deal, man, is that. I never watch other comics like when you're at the comedy store or whatever. Very rare. There's a few people I love to see. When you're on stage, I watch Aww. because you're so unpredictable and you're so honest and you're so raw. And you know what I love about you is you're so old school. Yeah. And that you go for the joke. I respect that. I, nothing makes me crazier than comics who are like, the, especially female comics. Yeah, I said it. Who are like, anyway, and so like, I suck this guy's dick. Yes, and, uh, <laughs> and they don't. <laughs> try yeah like just then say it i suck this guy's dick and i threw up mayonnaise yeah. whatever the fucking yeah thing i choked is. on it and yeah whatever yeah and i love your and int- i wish it was my uncle's yeah, yeah exactly like go for the joke bitch yeah i know oh, i know i, I commit to it because really who cares anymore who what, cares and i know no thank you that means so because you know i think you're um, i was laughing when you were doing your dates i laugh at everything you're so sweet okay where can they find you let's pull up her dates and i want her to plug them porn.com if you put in (laughs) face sitting jew i come up at the first 11 pages i'm the top face sitting jew porn on that site no if you go to if you go to (laughs) jew (laughs) if you go to jessica look at that face on my website yeah it's waiting for a dick no i um (laughs) go to jessicacurson.com i put up that has all my dates and then i put up new dates every week um i'm I'm gonna you know i'm touring all over also you're a maniac Uh, yeah i'm on the road constantly because i can't i can't uh be present and (laughs) i (laughs) I can't be in my feelings, so I have to no. be on the road constantly. Nobody, none of us can. That's why we're in this business. Yeah. That's a prerequisite to work here at Studio Jeans is the inability to feel your And feelings. let me tell you, no one's been here. This is, I'm, uh, this place, no one's been here. That sounded insane. This, this is, you're place, my first guest on the set, by the way. I am? Yep. Oh my God. And I'm going to applaud myself. I am I, thrilled this, to have you. Okay. I'm going to tell the world, whoever is listening to this right now, 
this place is fucking amazing. <laughs> I am so blown away, away and I am so jealous. Not jealous. I, I don't get jealous of people like that, but I am blown away. You're inspired. Let's say I am, inspired. I, that's a perfect word. Yeah. I am so inspired by what you have done here. This Thank you. For everyone that's listening and watching, it is unbelievable <laughs> what you go. Why are you laughing at because me? Because we spent like $10 million. It doesn't matter. And it's worth it. Our kids I, aren't going to go to college, but we've got this cool podcast. Well, I'll studio. put them through college because I have a trust <laughs> fund. But listen, my dad passed away. He did, I did. Yeah. Yes, I remember during the pandemic. It's okay. It's worth it. I got some money. But listen, <laughs> this place is sick. Good. It's amazing. I'm glad they you have like a it. fucking conference room and it's big. <laughs> It's ridiculous. The sets are unbelievable. There's like, there's, there's coat racks. It's crazy. Okay, there's coat racks. There's a bar. I know. And it's funny because there's a bar, there's a bar area. Here. Yeah. And we have a jukebox. And then it's this, crazy. It's, it's crazy to think that this is the house. There's a women's bathroom. That farts built. There's yeah. a women, there's a separate women's bathroom. Well, there's. What the fuck is going on? You didn't see the on? other genders that are represented as well? What I have genders? All 200. We have separate <laughs> bathrooms. <laughs> Thank God. Cause I have seven dicks and a pussy. <laughs> is there one for that? Is there a is there a bathroom for my gender? Well, you have to come up. What's your gender? What's your name? I don't brisket. Sept, sept, I identify <laughs> as a brisket. That's a tasty gender. We're no. having that for lunch. Want to eat it? Ah! All right. Can I, here's what I love about you. Is what? Well. Always be silly. That yes, is your that's motto. my motto. That's my hashtag. And what do I, I tell you? And I think it. That's what I love about you as well. And I think it's something that comes with age too, is where you're like, I don't care. Like, I don't, I don't care. I don't, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> and that, I love what you just. <laughs> yeah. And it's great because it, it's a function of like maturity. Mm -hmm. And also, you don't have to worry about being hot. Like, you, I don't care what anyone I thinks to me. Anymore I, I anymore never, either. but I never did. Well, Isn't you're that lucky. Fun? I did. I did. I mean, I care what who I'm sleeping with looks like a yeah. lot. They better be fucking hot, but <laughs> I can look however I want. <laughs> I'm picky about who I pick who I eat. Good for you. But yeah. Oh, you're, you're a lesbian. Yes. Yes. How long have you been a lesbian? Um, two weeks. Yeah. No, I'm joking. Um, no, I've been out since I'm 20. Well, I've been I've been eating box since I'm 21. Okay. But I mean, I fooled around in in junior high and like high school. Titties with girls. and Frenching. Yeah. yeah. So what was fingering. it like? Okay. So what was it like the first time you ate a box? Were you just like, oh, it was delicious? Were you so scared. Um, <laughs> cause I would imagine that like, I wasn't scared cause I was fucked up, yeah. but I was, I was really hungry. <laughs> but were you, um, were you nervous? I'm being serious. Like, were you, cause to me, I was that, nervous. Yeah. It's scary. I was nervous, but I was really excited too. You knew uh, that this is where you belonged. Yeah. With my face in someone's pussy, pussy. Yeah. Um, I was nervous. I mean, I was nervous that I would would not know what I was doing or whatever. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, I was, that was the first time. And of course you, you're like, do I, will I know what I'm, what I'm doing? But I had watched so much porn that I was pretty. <laughs> you prepped, you'd done your homework. Yeah. And, and I practiced and paid on off. the dog, you know, for a long time. So I, <laughs> I practiced on the, on the dog. That's what I, I love about you too. You're, you're like such a Sarah Highland. She makes fun of my God, voice all the time. I know she's great. She's amazing. She she's makes so me funny. laugh so hard. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah That's what I like about you. You're just such a tough East Coast lady. You're, you're, yeah. you're more like this. I'm like, I practiced on the dog for years. I fucking licked the dog's cunt. <laughs> and I love to, when you do your male characters, like, how you doing this, Matt? That's my father. Oh, is that right? Yeah, that character. How you doing, Jesse? <laughs> That's how he'd ask. You know how he'd ask me how I was doing emotionally? How's your head? How's your head? You okay? I'm like, well, I'm about to cut. But <laughs> how's your head? What was You this? feeling okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Look at that. What did he do for a living? He was a salesman. <laughs> he sold cosmetics. He sold cosmetics with that face. Well, he would. That he didn't look like that. Oh, could you imagine? He, I'm Jesse's father. <laughs> you want to buy some makeup? <laughs> well, he sold makeup. We to represent the lollipop <laughs> guild. The lollipop guild. He didn't look like that. No, he was a handsome uh, man. He was. He yeah. had a big Jewish nose. Yeah. Yeah. He could fuck someone with that nose. It yeah. was large. Yeah. And did he know that you were gay growing up? Like, did is it my know? fault? <laughs> 
That's what he said when I told him. I feel like it's my fault. (laughs) I wasn't easy on you. Um, (sighs) No. um, Well, no, he was okay with it because we're not, we were non-religious Jews. Non-religious Jews are not, yeah, we're not, you know, we have a lot more things to worry about, like how everyone hates us than if someone's <laughs> gay. Well, here's the thing. Gonna, if we're going to be sent back, you know, to the camps. Oh, yeah, the, of course. Yes. We talk about that a lot here on this show. <laughs> Nadav, he's an, you know, Nadav is an Israel right now. <laughs> I, was, I, I would put him on. We talk about Israeli stuff. So this is interesting. Um, we had a discussion a few weeks ago. Some parents were upset because they're having pride parades for kindergarten. Um <laughs> Okay, good. That's, that's hilarious. That's the reaction. Wait, what does that mean? So ex- exactly. So like they were encouraging. <laughs> they were having. Daddy, I want to suck dick. <laughs> what what is that? sucking dick? Yeah, like they don't even know <laughs> really what's going on, and they were having gay pride parades and for from kindergartners, and some parents that's, were like, "That makes no sense." Okay, that, thank you. And I'm gay. Thank I you. I don't understand what that means. Thank you. Well, who's having pride parades for? It was a kindergarten in in Texas, I want to say, in Texas. or California. <laughs> it yeah. has to be California. It's California or like Austin. Daddy, I won't suck dick. I can't see that. <laughs> it's more Cal. Well, because because here's the deal, man. Did you have? Did you know in kindergarten? Did you know like? Oh, no, I might be I, a lesbian. No, or? I was a tomboy, but that's not. But so was so, I. Right, that's what I'm saying. I was about. Yeah, there's. I did not know. No, no. Yeah, but. Yeah, Where that, was that's it, Zola? not. What do you mean? Where's we want to eat vagina. We want to eat vagina. <laughs> that makes no sense to me. Where was it? Texas, I believe. Austin. What? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so um, the Austin school system. So like, they're trying to be progressive, and I, I totally, I think that's great. Like, I mean, I, I mean, look, you, your mother, and you, you're with an you're with a lady yeah but i don't and, understand and, but do you want your kid like i guess the the reason was like you want those kids to feel like it's normal that they have two moms so that they don't feel of course like but it's weird i don't i don't i don't my children would not know yet yeah i don't think they would know yet i mean my oldest yes she's gonna be 16 but my yeah, like I don't think they would know yet if they were lesbians. If they were, but they, I have four daughters. I don't think the oh youngest. Oh my god, that's wild! There's so much estrogen in your house. And yeah, I'm the opposite. It's all dicks all day, and it is. <laughs> there's piss on dicks everything. flying around, and I'm pretty. Ma- I have a lot of masculine energy. Yeah. I'm very comfortable with that. You yeah. Know? But even sometimes I'm like, dude, I need to, I need to talk to a lady. We need yeah. to like talk about purses or something. Okay, I'm so, sure. So when did you like? How do you explain your daughters that oh mom's a lesbian or like how do you what happens it's just natural for them to grow up with two moms but then when do they get when do they have awareness of like what gay is or straight or whatever well my oldest like totally thinks it's cool and like i mean if you're not you know she's like the coolest one in the class because she has moms it's, yeah and and if you're not i feel like if you're not <laughs> bi and when you're yeah. like 15 or 16 now there's something wrong with you or non-binary right or la- yeah yeah i don't even know what any of that means i'm i'm <laughs> so, i don't know what anything means i'm so clueless do you i you probably know a lot I, more about it than i do i am fascinated cuz i don't want to be this older person that's like so out of the loop with what the kids are up to cuz yeah. i I try to understand it from their perspective. I, from what I understand, like it's just how you identify currently. Right. Like, I might be. I'm. I'm feeling a a gender today. I'm neither male nor female. So my pronouns are they them or whatever. Right. But I think to older people, you're just kind of like, wait, what? That's so stupid. I don't judge any of it. I just don't. I I, I have to learn more about it. Oh, I judge it because I don't want to be <laughs> <laughs> only I, because I don't I don't want people to restrict my language. Like if you want you, you're they them. I have an issue. Great. The, the only thing out of all of it that I have an issue with is people that get angry if I don't understand it or That's tell what me saying. what I can or should say that's the only thing I get angry with and that I get I get pissed when people get impatient with other people like you should say this or you should call when people tell me I should call myself queer like when young people (sighs) listen to me when young people say to me you should be okay calling yourself queer I'm like don't fucking tell me (laughs) 
okay, what I should be and shouldn't be comfortable with. I fucking paved the way for you, you fucking piece of shit. Yeah. I went through hell. You have a much easier time now than I went through. I couldn't even walk down the street holding hands with someone I love uh, 30 years ago. I couldn't. I'm telling you right now. It was Mm. not easy for me. And this is where you where did you grow up? In New York? No, I went to school in Maryland. I had to hide a rela- a college. I had to hide a Ugh. relationship for years because I was not in an environment where it was okay. Like mm-hmm. I was not accepted. It was not accepted years ago. This was 30 years ago. I yeah. couldn't, it was not like it was now. In my, when I went to high school, when I started having feelings, it was not, a, no one was gay. You were not gay. No one said, I'm gay. So, you know, and this guy, like, David, was feminine. Up, yeah. Yeah, or yeah. this girl, Kathy, yeah. who played softball, was <laughs> yeah. was maybe butchy. Or, but she wasn't a lesbian. There was no lesbians or gay people when I went to high school. No one was out. You were not out. There was no gay group. There was no alliance. There was nothing. There was like the drama club. Exactly. And that was That's it. what it was. Yeah. But no one was out. Yeah. That's terrible. And if you were, if you were a gay guy or something, you know, you were, you were bullied or you were beaten up. It was not, that was not the case when I was growing up. So I don't, I'm not okay with anyone telling me what I should or shouldn't call myself or how I should be. I mean, I got married to a woman. I had children with a woman. I mean, I'm living the life that, you know, and, and my first relationship with a woman, I had, I had a wedding and a child with someone and it wasn't legal. I couldn't even, I couldn't even have a legal wedding. It wasn't legal at the time. Yet. So we ended up having a wedding that we couldn't even have a legal wedding. It's wild. So we paid all this money to have a wedding just so that we could, we could, you know, feel that experience and we couldn't even have a legal wedding. Mm. It was horrible. Crazy that there was a time when we couldn't be. Not that long ago. No, no, no. This was like, let me think. This was Zoe's going to be, my oldest is going to be 16. So this was like, yeah, this was like a little over 16 years ago. See, but then see, then it sounds to me like you're like now this is making the argument for these people who are like, no, respect my pronouns, like respect gay people, respect da 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 da. But maybe it goes to because that did help ease society into like, oh, gay people are humans, yes. not freaks. But then I think it, when it gets militant. Where it's like, oh, no, you can't say. You must call yourself. I'm fine with all it's of like, it. Don't I, tell I'm me fine what with, the fuck to say. Right. I'm fine with the pronoun. I'm fine with all of it. I think it's great. And I yeah. think be who you are. Call yourself anything. I love that. I think it's great. But the militant, like telling me what I should I, say. That's, I agree. I don't appreciate the infringement. That's, that's the only thing I have an issue with. Same. Because I grew up liberal as shit. Like I grew me up too. in LA. Yeah. I went to school in San Francisco. I knew gay people my whole life mm-hmm. and we, they were accepted and yeah, secretly married in the 90s in San mm-hmm. Francisco too. Like, oh, so sad. Yeah. Um, Anyway, I I'm so I'm so glad you're here to, at a great time. So so gay pride praise in kindergarten. We're going to pass on that. Yeah, I think that's young. I think that's pretty young to be doing that. Um, Too yeah, young, but maybe it, like, do you tell kids? I mean, my kids are aware of gay people because of we've course had gay people me. around them and like, oh, you can marry a boy as well. And that's cool. And then they're like, whoa, OK. And now it's normal. That's all you have to do. I agree. Like parents, they you don't need maybe you don't need to have like the parades. They like just be like, hey, guess what? That guy married another guy. That girl married another girl. Oh, far out. That's it. Done. Like that's the big discussion. Yeah, I I <laughs> think that that's that is the big discussion, and I think yeah. it's very simple. Yeah, and very easy. Um, I think people go a little too far on both sides. Yeah, and it's really if we can all just come meet in the middle and just make it a little more simple, it, yeah. it, it can really just, it's really not that complicated. Yeah, I think so too. I think, I think, uh, I think we're done being super sensitive. I think we're getting ready to like talk again. You know, mm-hmm. I, honestly, I hope so. Yeah. I hope so because it's gotten really out of control. It's crazy. It's crazy. And, um, it's so hypocritical too because Hollywood is the place that's like, we're against bullying. Yet Will Smith can stand up and punch Chris Rock in the mouth, sit down in his seat, shout at him, and then receive an award. All in the same, like nobody ushered. And get a standing ovation. Yeah. I know. It, this, <laughs> like, this, what? everyone has lost what? their minds. I say this all the time. That people have lo- nothing lost shocks me anymore. Yeah. Nothing. 
I mean, I feel like I could win an award and like a goat would come on stage, just <laughs> shit in front of me. Someone could pick it up, fling it in my face. Yeah. You know, my, my I agreed. Yeah. yeah. My father can come back from the dead, say you'll never make it. And then I could be taken on a UFO and like never be seen again. Like, I don't know what's going on anymore. I know. I feel like we, the world did turn upside down. Yeah. Which you is, just have to live your life. But, you just, which, but which is kind of, you have to live. Your, yeah. Also, and also very, it's also kind of liberating because when everyone's been canceled and everyone's in this crazy hyper or whatever real state, now we're free. Like we're yeah. free. Like, oh, I don't give a shit. Like, I don't oh, care anymore. Fucking care. Yeah. I don't. <laughs> I don't care about anything. Yeah. I really I've I've I was thinking about that when I woke up this morning. I'm like, I, I really don't anything. care. I don't care if I walk outside and I have shit on my pants. <laughs> But doesn't that come as a function of from a function of like, I think once you become a parent, it does too. And getting older, uh -huh. I don't care anymore. I don't care. I I, <laughs> care. I care more about the right things and oh, right. less about the stuff that is so trivial. I care about my children fiercely and my yeah. husband fiercely, and yeah. everything else is gold, like or uh, icing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you're so adorable. <laughs> Little Spoon is a one-stop shop for healthy, easy meal time and snack time for your baby, toddler, and big kid delivered right to your door. Little Spoon makes healthy meal time easy at every stage, saving hours in your week and um, all at a reasonable price. And they're also the most flexible company. Pause, modify, cancel, or skip at any time. Is there anything worse when you sign up for something and then it keeps coming? But I love with Little Spoon, you can really make it specific to what you need. Most of the baby slash kids food at the grocery store is heavily processed and often on the shelf longer than um, your little one has been in this world. So it's not cool and the quality uh, that your kids deserve is, is way better, which is why I love Little Spoon. It makes everything fresh and uses absolutely nothing artificial. It's just like homemade and delivered to your door and ready in seconds. Pop your meal in the fridge or freezer and use them when you're ready. It's just that easy. All of their recipes taste absolutely delicious, are nutritionally balanced and free of junk, helping to get your little one up for a lifetime of health. And seriously, I tried everything and it tastes legit great. Your kids are gonna love it. Uh, both of mine, my three and my six-year-old love Little Spoon. The best part is the price is right. With kids' meals under $5 and baby food and smoothie snacks under $3, it makes trying Little Spoon easy. Start the new year fresh with Little Spoon. Get 50% off your first order with the code WMMA at checkout. But you know what's great? You're yeah. so loaded that I can sue you and get some money. <laughs> no, you can't. And I'm a Jew. I know a lot Ooh, of good lawyers. Da, da, da. I have seven in my family. You do? Of course. I'm Jewish. That's so great. Why are, the, why are the Jews into the money? What's the deal? We have to be. Do you realize what happened to us? I do. You guys have been historically fucked. I know. Like generationally traumatized and I know. victimized. It's I know. very bizarre. I would have had great art and jewelry, but it was well, all Well, interesting taken now. Away. So Annie and I are having this running discussion about who's more oppressed, women or black people. And now you bring Jews. And I'm, I'm wondering. <sighs> women. What, number one you i don't i don't yes. know I, listen oh, let me tell you something i watch bridgerton and i'm here thinking to myself do these broads have such a bad life they get Christina, to just knit and crochet all from, day from the beginning of time women because <laughs> now i'm looking i'm like is it so bad to marry a viscount and just cross stitch all day long I don't have to go to work or do nothing. I feel like from the beginning of, of time, women have never had a hole be safe. Has a hole be safe. Yeah, that's true. Rape, I, rape, I, I mean, really, you that's true. never. So the rape, the rape. Rape. You can't, that's true. We've never, we've never had a safe hole. This is true. No, that's true. Black, black people and as a general don't fear rape constantly. Right. Well, Any, do you fear rape? <laughs> I fear rape. <laughs> not, no, not cons consistently, no. But I think there was a time maybe where we did. With the women. You, like when we but, didn't but, have rights, you know. But hold on, but that would fall yeah, into the category but, of women. Yeah, but I think women, ha even their ears have been raped, their noses, <laughs> every fucking hole has been raped since the beginning of time. I bet, I bet Eve, I bet her fucking nose was raped. She her was fucking raped. ears, her belly button, everything was raped. Is that a hole? Oh my God. Every hole. I was reading this awful article about the Ukraine stuff. Like they, the Russians raped like an eighty-something year old. Woman. I can't even hear that. I'll You're start. Like, what? I, 
I can't really. Sorry. Was she hot? I can't. <laughs> I really what can't. What tab is that on the you porn, Jess? I know, really. Can someone bring that up? Because I've had a really <laughs> slow week. You're into face sitting. You said that before. Is I'm that not into jam? face sitting. So I'm not into Unless that. someone's really will not stop talking and then I'll hop right <laughs> on it. Wait, but go back. So you think women are number one on the oppression scale? I do, scale? because then you can talk black women, Jewish women. Right, you put all the all the yeah. different women, kinds of women. Women are the most, I mean, wow. people fucking hate women. Even That's women hate women. Everyone wow. hates women. Wow. I hate women. I mean, so wow. I hate myself. I hate you. I hate every <laughs> woman. So... Um, See, that's no, I funny. You, I used joking. to I used to feel that way. And then now that I'm a mom and I'm like on the other side of it, right? I'm I'm my worst nightmare. Like if you would have asked 20 year old Christina, what's your worst nightmare? It, it'd be exactly what I'm doing right now. I've got a mom podcast and I've got a friend around. <laughs> and like I just love being a mom like that. I'm the worst. I'm the worst feminist nightmare. Like, um, but I think what happened was I had children. And I was like, oh, this is divine. Like I, in a sense of like, this is power. Oh, I'm at yeah. home raising babies and there's nothing more important than raising good humans. Right. So that's a form of power. It may not be a male form of power of like changing laws and such, but like <laughs> it's still a power. I don't know. I'm all, I'm, I'm debating you are it all. Doing, you yeah. are one of the most powerful yes, people you. in entertainment right now. Am I? Am Forget I? about okay. like fucking Angelina Jolie. Oh, you're wow. doing. You don't. Wow. Do you not. Do you understand what you're doing? You what are doing? on your own schedule. I know. It's you the don't best. have. We were just talking about this before we went on. You don't have to answer to one person. It's crazy. You have your own company. You have your <sighs> own media company. This is insane. What you're doing. Okay, stop. I, I can't take all this. I feel like I'm you. When, when do you want me to put you down? Do, you, do your internal monologue when you. Like, it's I all going to be okay. Yeah. You're doing the best you can. Don't She's, eat bread. It's your worst <laughs> success. It's all, it's all going to be okay. Just keep taking care of yourself. <laughs> your children love you. You know, I know. I know. Well, let's talk I, about this. Let's talk about work. And, and so, so here's what I'm thinking. Oh, wait, hold on. Hold on. I want to, no, I don't want to go into this discussion. Uh, okay. Let's talk about work and, and all this because it's interesting now because I am watching Bridgerton season two. I don't know if you're into that horseshit. No. Okay. I mean, I'll watch it if you think I should. No, I'm it's always stupid. looking for it's, a new. It's, it's terrible. It's, but um, is there face sitting? There was in season <gasps> one and then it was so horny in season one and now it's very chaste. Oh, very it. different. Yeah. Victorian. Uh, uh, but uh, okay. So my thinking is. I'm because I'm becoming less of a feminist traditional in the sense of like I see the gender divides being very useful now. In effect, like I stay home most of the time with my children. The husband goes out and earns a living, mm -hmm. and I used to be dreading that dynamic because I thought, oh, I'm going to be so jealous and resentful of my husband because I want to go out and work. I want to make the career happen. Da, da, da. And actually, I'm finding it's the opposite. Where I'm like, I feel so bad for him that he has to go. Out <laughs> I baked cookies this morning. And yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so are those gender roles necessarily bad? But see, you, it, it's tough because you have to do both. You're both mother and primary breadwinner. How is that? How does that play out? What is your life like? My goodness. So I am not the stay-at-home mom. I am the breadwinner. Um, and I am very comfortable with that. I'm very traditional in so many ways. Um, and I uh, like being the quote unquote, this might sound bad to people, but I don't care. Like, no one like cares one of those, right? I don't, yeah. I don't give a shit when anyone thinks anyway. I like being the quote unquote, like male in the relationship. I love being a provider. It makes me very happy to go out and um, work and make money and bring money home to the family. Like I always felt comfortable in that role. I always wanted that. I never saw myself as a stay at home mom ever, like yeah. ever, even as a child, I was never like, I'm going to be a mom and stay home and have children. You know, I never for one second saw myself in that role ever. Yeah. So this has always been what I wanted. I love 
I just love being a provider. And that, but that's your contribution to yeah. the whole thing is like, yeah. I'm going to bring the resources back home. And right. then my wife deals with the yeah. day-to-dayness. Yeah. And I love, um, I'm incredibly generous that way. Like I just, and I want to just make more and more and more and provide for my children and give them a life where they never have to worry. And that's just who I am and what I want. And um and and I always just want to achieve more and create more. And I I'm also and I think you'll relate to this. I'm like a gypsy. I, I never you know, I, I my parents got separated and divorced when I was 13 and I lived Ugh. in both houses. I was a bad, bad, bad age. 13 is like ground yeah. zero. For I know. Drama. I Already know. Right. About that. So I lived out of a bag. Ugh. So I always lived yeah, out of I a have bag. That too. Right. Same. I knew you would yeah. understand that. So yeah. I live out of a bag now. I always have a suitcase, as you're going to understand, next to the bed. Mm-hmm. And it's just comfortable for me. So I would, if I had to be home, I would crazy. not be okay. <laughs> it would not be okay. I'd I end know. up in a hospital. So I'm <sighs> very comfortable being on the road. And That's I would, true. it's just, this is familiar and comfortable for me. That's and, so true. Yeah. See, because I, I very much have that same yeah. rolling stone. Like, I, I don't find bouncing around, but I also not fine because it, it fucks with me. Mm-hmm. And um, But also staying home with children is so boring. It's horrible. It's so horrible. And and I, I'm so lucky that I can come here and do a podcast and get away for a few hours and then go back. But you're also on the road. I do. So you're not like, not you're as, not, not as like, much, but I take right. them with me now. Oh, you do? <laughs> yeah, I'm an asshole. I'm that's crazy. a lot. I know. It's a lot. But that's what a, isn't that a must lot? Be, it, God you're damn right, it. but that's that must be tough yeah, to get is. on stage after being with them all day. It's I'm not with them all day. I might okay. bring my nanny, so she's with them. Oh, so you're you bring them with you and then you're not with them at all, and then you go on stage. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm still I'm with joking. Them. I'm all joking. Right. God. But that's interesting. Okay, so so you took a traditional I'm, you vi- kind I'm of did incredibly the, traditional. You did the traditional gender role. Yeah, thing. I, d- I am. See, and I'd like to talk to to women or people, whatever out there. Like, are you a non? Like, what do you guys do? How do you guys devise labor? Devise is that how I would say that? Devise labor? I don't know. I feel like like when I used to go to college and read a lot, <laughs> I feel like I knew how to talk. And then, how do you guys devise the age? Yeah, I, I you haven't delegate. Read, Delegate, yeah. I Divide. haven't read books Thank and you. fucking. I've been in my book club. We read about husband murder. That's it. I don't read about anything <laughs> intelligent. Um, divide labor in your house. I'm curious to know how many people do a traditional gender role. So even with two women, one of you stays home primarily, and one of you goes out and and brings home the bacon. Some people don't do that. Well, in how, so how does it work? I mean, I my dad was very much like that. He you know, my, my stepmother didn't work and my okay. dad, um, worked and traveled and came home and dinner was ready. And wow. I know, I know <laughs> so much work. It is yeah. so hard for a woman to do. Right. Now shit. my mom always worked. Um, my mom still works at her age. She's still a therapist and still wow. sees clients. It's just, um, now, and it's Danielle works. She she but hold sees on, clients. But, but did your mother work? So that's this is what I'm saying. My mother worked as well, but my parents were split, and so they both had to work. Mm-hmm. But I'm saying, like in homes that are intact, like mommy daddy, does mom go as hard at work as dad does? Because I just don't, I don't know. Because I can't go as hard, and I don't go as hard because so I want to raise the kids. I what never. We, so fucking, this was my thing. When I was growing up, my mom worked a lot, a lot. My mother was a therapist and she spent a lot of time seeing clients and I, I was neglected a lot, you know, and it's not her, she, she had to work a lot and she wanted to work a lot and I felt neglected a lot and it affected mm. me in my life. <clears throat> Excuse me. And one of my, one of my things was with, with both women that I had children with, um, I I'm I won't have children unless um, someone is home with them. Yeah. And in my career, I'm not going to be home a lot. So if if that doesn't work for you, I'm not agreeing to have children. I made that very clear because I did not want to bring up kids where the the pri- a primary mother was not home a lot. Yeah. It was very important to me because it affected me a lot yeah, to yeah. not have a mom around. And to this day. At times, it affects me a lot. 
Yeah. And so I didn't want to, na- I was brought up by a housekeeper and a nanny and it was not, it, it's, it's hard. It's still hard in some ways. So both women that I've had children with wanted to be home. At least they had a housekeeper to be home. and a nanny. I was brought up by um, different strokes and Alice and of uh, the right. Beverly Hills teens. I was brought Webster. up by that too. <laughs> but and I was home. Latchkey I kids. was home at, at night. I was home yeah, alone. Me too, so during the day, there was there was someone there after school. But then once dinner Ugh. time, you know, I was alone. And I was alone Wait, a was lot. Your mom working at night. She was. My mom was very involved. She, she either had clients or she was out a lot. She was involved with um, something called Est which was, um, oh, I know, yeah. Warner Earhart. She worked a lot for free for uh, these seminars. So she would leave and I was, and I was home alone a lot. So Oof. I had to like find dinner and find stuff. It was, it was tough. Yeah, It was very tough. I, I, so I was like, listen, if you want kids, that's great, but I'm not going to be home a lot because I do stand up and this is just the truth. And I travel um, so someone has got to be home with these kids cause I'm not going to do it. I'm not, I'm not, you know, I can't, I can't watch how I grew up. Mm-mm, me neither. And they both were like, I want to be home with the kids. That's all I want in life is to be home with my children and bring up my, I'm like, okay, that's fine. Great. I mean, I will be home sometimes, but realistically my career is going to keep getting better and getting, you know, I'm yeah. going to be out more yep. and I'll wow. help, but you know, see, cause that's, I feel like I was sold a lie as a younger woman with feminism, I, you know, I was hardcore in college. I was the philosophy major. I was like, yeah, it's a social construct, man. Gender isn't real. It's bullshit because yeah. I'm this, I'm like a badass woman. I do everything. And then you're like, well, no, that's not even practically, that's not possible. Like I, <laughs> I, I can, without children, you can do everything. Yes. Um, but then once you've committed to these lives, it's like, well, who's going to raise them, guys? Like who... So I don't know. I, I guess it's where I'm at in my life where I'm like, I've surrendered to this and, and I like this. I don't I don't know. If you're like that, if you're a woman. Well, I'm that, drawn to my children. I, I, that's I'm what so I'm saying. drawn if that I can't fathom. If you're a woman and a mother who feels that way. Yeah. Because there's a lot of women and mothers who don't feel that. Have that. Yep, yep, and, yep. And, and do have other people bring up a lot. Yeah. have other people bring up their kids so i'd like to talk to those that. ladies tell me so i'm curious if you're out there how does that work how does how do you feel about that do you have any issues or their guilt what are the issues because there's there's good and bad to every decision you make yeah i'm home with them all the time and i'm fucking crazy it gets depressing it gets boring it gets mundane as fuck and 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 it's hard so but then you know you you, you make your choices and you live with consequence yeah i don't think my mom really felt that draw to like be home with her kids all the time and that like i feel this you know pull to my kids and i want to be home with them she was a very young mom and she didn't want to be home with her kids all the time and i i'm not angry at her i get it but it wasn't great wasn't great because i didn't have that that mom around yeah. Well, it's also, I think, different in my case because I had children like at 40. It's very I'm different. fucking old. And very different. I've already like traveled. I've done a lot in my life. So yeah. the point of, yeah, I've lived a life. So when you're 20 and you have children, I get it. You don't want to be home. You want to be out in the world, you know, J and D's and doing whatever the fuck it is 20 year old girls do, not burping babies and cleaning assholes. Uh, anyway. So. Yeah. I, I want to do a follow up. This is interesting. I was talking about Vince Lombardi. I don't. Do you remember Vince Lombardi? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay. And um, I was watching this documentary about Vince Lombardi ages ago, and it stuck with me ever since. How everybody revered him for being such a hard worker. Like he fucking worked himself to the ground, and he was the type to 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 work to the point where his wife, like, he just neglected. The children neglected the wife, neglected the yeah. family. Like the, the wife knew not to bother Vince on Sunday if the game didn't go well or, you know. Yeah, yeah. And um, and I was like, it's interesting in our culture how we revere these men who work themselves to death. Um, even Johnny Carson, let's go comedian route. I, I think he was one, the best late night host. Besides, I love Letterman, too. Real piece of shit in private life. Mm-hmm. Um, how many wives? Like seven wives Johnny had. Um, alcoholic, ignored the family. There's stories of Johnny falling asleep on the couch and the kids are just, Daddy, where are you? Like, not, doesn't give a fuck. 
So this is a someone wrote in about Lombardi syndrome. Um, asking why men, okay, why do men work themselves to death like Lombardi? And I have a theory. In the same episode, you talked about the Oedipus complex. You know how kids will love mom and hate dad? Well, society is a bit like that too. No matter what dads do, they're always looked at as a secondary parent and more as a provider. Mom quits her job to take care of the kids. Great mom. Dad quits his job. Deadbeat. Ah, oh, that's interesting. So I think their mentality is this. I'm going to be the greatest fucking coach slash plumber slash comedian slash accountant that there ever was. And then maybe if the world loves me enough, my maybe my family will too. <sighs> As Will Smith's latest victim used to say, only women, children, and dogs are loved unconditionally. Just my two cents. Wow. It's interesting. Wow. Mm -hmm. I never thought of it that way. Because men are discarded. That's true. Unless they're useful. <laughs> they have to be useful. Women that's can very get by true. on our looks. <laughs> yeah. The most part. But uh, wow. That's that's what do you guys say? you have any thoughts on that? boys in the booth uh, i mean I, I think that's pretty accurate yeah like if i'm not providing i'm kind of worthless so oh, wow i mean that's just reality though you know that's how we push forward otherwise what are we gonna do you yeah. need us to do that yeah i would agree too wow it's a but, lot of pressure but i will say it doesn't feel too much like a burden i i, I don't feel like burdened by it it feels like I kind of get like a, a, a thrill from that. Like, oh yeah, I, I get to do this, you know? I get to be that provider. So I don't know. I, I guess if you can't, you're probably not feeling too good. But uh, when you do, it feels great as a man, I'll say. I think it's a point of pride. Yeah. Point of personal totally. privilege? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. I don't know. It's interesting because society is changing for boys and men now too, like how they're... Like, I watched Batman yesterday. I fled my house for four hours to watch Batman. Man, they fucked up that character so bad. They fucked up Spider-Man, and they done fucked up Batman. <laughs> Spider-Man cries now every fucking two seconds. I don't know if you saw that piece of shit. I didn't, but I would not want to see Spider-Man crying. Oh, my God. He's a hero. And then Batman is a fucking... He's got no lead in his pencil anymore. you got Zoe Kravitz... <laughs> Who's like the most gorgeous, you know, Zoe Kravitz. Oh my God, she's hot. She's fucking perfection. Yeah. And she plays Catwoman, stunning Zoe Kravitz. And she basically is like, I want to bang you. And he's like, nah. And he drives away. I'm like, you're such a puss, what? dude. What? And he's got his hair in his face the whole time. Like, I'm the broody, moody, moody adolescent Batman. Like, did this is not Batman. Batman to me, is like the epitome of like the rich guy that's got all the cool toys. He he likes being a vigilante. He enjoys his life. He's not thrust into this against his will. So I I thought I found it to be fucking oh boy spineless. And, and they threw in white privilege. There was like oh, line about no. like, it's <laughs> like oh fuck off. They fucked. They done fucked it up. Can you imagine if he went by like a woke name instead of Batman? They pretty they did wokeify this thing a lot. Yeah. Woke man. We're, woke man. <laughs> Maybe that's the what we need to make. Where we can appease. Let's make a let's make a <laughs> let's make a movie, Woke Man. That'll be amazing. That'll be and it's every everyone's represented all the time in every yeah. scene. And and no one can find dispute I with anything. I don't know if I feel safe going. I'm triggered. So am I. The wheels in yeah. the wheelchair. And then the amputee comes yeah. in and yeah. she uses her superpower and uh, yeah, the fantastic. <laughs> she she's but she's hot. She's also able to be sexualized. It's very important that we yeah. still the keep amputee sexy throws amputee. fingers yeah. at someone. <laughs> to... <laughs> Fucking hell! You know what's incredible? I I deal with something that I think you'll find fascinating. Mm. So when I go away on the weekends, sometimes like people will be like, "Oh, you're going away again?" Because I'm a woman. Oh, that's interesting. Right? So like if I were, I feel like if I were the husband. Oh, yeah. I would never get shit for it. Never. But because I'm a woman married to a woman, some people in our lives would be like, oh, you're leaving again to go on a gig? Like it's amazing because <laughs> I, <laughs> it happens a lot. That's what I mean. So you get, you get double it's, it's really fucking annoying because yeah. I'm I'm making money and uh, like there's a house. There's yeah. like it's I, I provide a nice life. 
Yeah. But it's like, oh, you're leaving to go away. Where are you going this week? Or, yeah. oh, you're, you, oh, wow, you're going away again. And I'm like, yeah, I have to pay a huge fucking mortgage. How do you think there's all that? Like, but if, it, if like, my father never got that. No. When he went to Europe to go do work or when he went, like, you, men don't hear that a lot. No, my husband does get the, like, wow, you really are coming everywhere on this tour. Or, like, whoa, you're really working a lot. But no one ever is, like... Wow, you have to go away again? Yeah, like, do you, do you think your kids will be sad? Like, nobody cares. Wow. Nobody's... Did, yeah, I get it all the time. <laughs> yeah, because the, the mother by how, nature... How do you think who's paying for the nanny? How do you think all this yeah. is going... I know. What the fuck do you... How do you... But then again, so those are the traditional, the traditional gender roles. They assume because you're a woman with the tits that you should be the one that wants to be home and nurturing. This is... And, these aren't tits. It's just fat. <laughs> I've just been eating a lot of carbs. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. It's really annoying. That yeah. annoys me more than anything. So now I just say stuff. I'm like, yeah, I am. I'm actually going away for months. I'm not coming back <laughs> until October. Yeah. It's so fucking frustrating to me because I'm telling you, if I were a man, it it wouldn't happen. It would not. It no. would not be said to me a lot. That's true. They're they're not expected to raise children. It's just not. Yeah. It's not a thing for them. Yeah. It's interesting, and I'd like to hear from stay at home dads. I wonder if how does that work? Do they get shamed for not working? Are you stay at home dad? Let us know what that's like. Leave me a voicemail. Let's put up I the bet phone they number. Do. What's the phone number? Well, I can't see that. Will you read out their phone, the phone number? Leave me a voicemail what it's like to be a stay-at-home dad or send me an email. I bet they get shamed for not working and I bet they get seen as feminine. Like it's a it's a very like, you know, or or lazier. Meanwhile, it's harder than any job. To stay home, yeah. It's, it's the worst. <laughs> it's harder than anything. I mean, when I'm if there's home no for stopping. a while, I'm like, whoa, this is it's horrible. exhausting. Exhausting. I can't, I know. What's the phone number, Zoli? 213-375-5184 or you can leave an email at where my mom's at at gmail.com thank you and it's exhausting because there's no breaks it literally is like it's non like i'm sick now guess what i still have to take care of the babies there's no mm -hmm. there's no break but uh mm -hmm. you know it's it's not gonna last forever and i know there'll be come a day where i i will miss um, the insanity and I'm trying to enjoy the bright spots and and uh, and stay positive and fuck it you know what else am I going to do that's another thing I, I always say like what am I going to do am I what would I do if I didn't have kids am I going to fucking go to brunch again you know I've lived that life I've been yeah. for like, you know I was an adult and I was like I'm bored I, I can't do this I, it's so masturbatory to just live for yourself it really it's is fucking boring. Like I'm not that interesting. I'm and Tom is not that interesting after a while. Like, no, it's not. Fuck. And you're fuck. and they are. It does go so quick. And mm, then they're just going to be me. your kids are just going to be masturbating. And yeah, pretty soon. Right. Yeah. And like just playing video games and they're not going to be interested. I mean, my, you know, Zoe is my oldest and she is. Uh, incredible. But, you know, then they be get into their friends and edibles That's and like scary. they don't. They don't care. Like, I mean, she loves me more than anything, but she they're that's it. They're into their friends. At what age? Twelve? Do I lose them at twelve? Before Fuck. that a little. No. Yeah. I know. That's why that's why I spend time with them now. You should. Fill them with it's, like like last night I was like, let's go listen to records. I'm like, Aw. these are the Pixies. What do you think of the Pixies? Oh, that's cute. And he's like, it makes my ears hurt. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Maybe not Pixies. That's so cute. Yeah. Do you like jazz? You know? Just, uh, oh God. Okay, so let's talk about this. This I'm interested in as well. I think people that don't believe gender is real has not raised boys. Yeah. And hasn't hasn't raised children. So what do you, when your experience, have your girls been traditional girly girls? That's an interesting question. Like what's your experience been raising girls, four of them? Yeah. Well, the, I have, I love this. I have three girly girls, right? Well, this is so interesting. They're all different. So my oldest Zoe is is a girly, um, very into makeup and her. And hair you forced and, this on her, right? Like when she of came course, out of because I want her to be straight, <laughs> because I don't want her to be a sinner. Um, so <laughs> you, you gave her lipo early, like yeah, five years I, old, and she better be thin. Oh, if yeah. she's fat, I'll fucking Fuck kill her. That. Yeah. Um, so, Hot. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just need her to be very thin and Not. attractive because that's all that matters. I don't <laughs> care if she's a cunt, but she better be 
very thin. And oh always look good because she's a representative. You know, she always look represents good. Represents me. Can I tell, and, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. She's yeah. an extension of you. Exactly. You are her. And she I is need you. to live through her. Absolutely. And, yeah. Yeah. Can I tell you? I was in um, Bloomingdale's. Yeah. In Chicago. Uh, 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 and I saw fucking cut off jean shorts for like eight year olds. Yeah. With like <laughs> glitter on the pussy, and I was like, "Who's buying this?" And a like, lot of people. Nah. For girls, I'm bro. not kidding. I'm serious. It might just, yeah, it's great. I some of them, you're like, does that, does that, you can like see a polyp in that. It's yeah. crazy. That's wild. I know. First of all, Zoe is my, my. I'm not. I know I'm being by my almost 16 year old is stunning. Okay, really, she's, she's an actress with oh. an agent. The whole thing. Are you worried about all the chemicals you're putting on your lawn to keep it looking its best? Of course I am. I don't want my kids playing on pesticides. Did you know that traditional lawn care lays down 90 million pounds of pesticides each year? Well, there's definitely an alternative. It's Sunday. Sunday can help you grow a beautiful lawn without the guesswork or the nasty chemicals. Their custom plans include fertilizer and everything you need to easily care for your lawn. And with ingredients like seaweed, iron, molasses, you can feel good with kids and pets being around. All you have to do is visit GetSunday.com. You put in your address and their lawn analysis tool does the rest. And they use soil and climate data to create a personal nutrient plan delivered to your door when you need it. It really is easy. They send you a bag, you attach it to your hose, you spray it on, it takes less than 15 minutes. Sunday is offering our listeners 20% off. Full season plans start at just $129 and you can get 20% off at checkout when you visit getsunday.com slash WMMA. That's 20% off your custom plan at getsunday.com slash WMMA. Ooh, are you taking a summer trip? Do you want to learn the language of the country you're going to? Use Babbel. I love Babbel because I can do it when I just have 10 minutes and that's all it takes. The, the lessons are 10 minutes each so you can start having real life conversations in a new language in as little as three weeks. Other language learning apps use AI for their lesson plans, but Babbel lessons were created by over 150 language experts. Their teaching method uh, has been scientifically proven to be effective, and you can choose from 14 different languages. Uh, Spanish, German, French, Italian, plus Babbel speech recognition technology helps you to improve your pronunciation and accent. There's so many ways to learn with Babbel. In addition to lessons, you can access podcasts, games, videos, stories, and even live classes. Uh, plus, it comes with a 20-day money-back guarantee. It's just the easiest way to learn a language. The lessons are super intuitive and super fun. They have cute little characters. It's it's absolutely awesome. So right now, save up to 60% off your subscription when you go to babbel.com slash WMMA. That's babbel.com slash WMMA for up to 60% off your subscription. Babbel, language for life. So she's very, she's feminine, artsy, like tons of bracelets, like hippie. She's amazing. You would die over her. She's <laughs> so cool. She's really and funny and fun. And then... Um, my my six year old Isabella is like also incredibly feminine, like makeup has to wear like pocketbooks, the whole thing. But she's a little so hard. Funny. Yeah, she's tough. Yeah. So because she's had like heart issues, I've told you oh, about her. Yeah. So she's had like heart surgery. So she's a little like mama, seriously, like she's a little. <laughs> <laughs> but she's also really fem like wears like shoes with heels, like with like you know, like um, sweatpants. Like she has like a little, I feel like she's going to be a tough cookie. Yeah. But also really feminine. Then I have twins. You know, I have twin almost three-year-olds. And Madison. Your life is I know, crazy that's town. What, right. So I, Madison, the one of the twins is, is a tomboy. Like this is amazing. I have no idea how this happened. That's what I mean. Like this just happens. There's no rhyme or reason. But she only wants to play with Paw Patrol trucks oh, out of nowhere. Like it. no one, nothing happened to make this the case. That's but she's thing. just drawn to like, she's an athlete. She has, she has a great arm. She is, she wants trucks, just, you know, dogs and like little male, like the, the little boy stuff, all like, that's all she, and she plays by herself with all this shit. And then Charlotte, her twin is a girly girl. 
wants makeup on, wants to play with princesses and dolls. You hand Madison a doll, she throws it. Like she yeah. has no interest. That's the thing is, and this whole it, thing of like, oh, gender is a social construct. I'm like, I, I tried handing my boys Barbies when they were little, two years old, and throw it, throw, put her in the toilet, fucking rip her head off, <laughs> throw her down, <laughs> put her in the dirt, <laughs> dig a hole, you know. G.I. Joe stabs her. Like it's not. Yeah. And you were Tom, but so was I. And no oh. one, no one made me. I just, you, I, I was just, just a masculine. I'm a handsome too. lady. And <laughs> I, I loved wearing cargo pants. Me too. The pockets. And I love dressing like Michael Jackson. Aww. And um, yeah, thank God no one bought me that red leather beat it jacket. Because <laughs> I would have fucking worn that thing. I loved kangaroo shoes and um, I, I, I wanted to be Don Johnson. <laughs> I wanted to be like my male superhero, my figures growing up. Yeah. Isn't that weird? I didn't, yeah. but I didn't see them as men. I just, I wanted to be Pippi Longstocking. I, I loved, loved Pippi Longstocking. Yeah. Yeah. So I wanted to just be full of power. I, I didn't, I didn't, cons gender wasn't a thing, right? Like I just wanted I, it to be. It wasn't a thing for me too. And now look at you, full of power. It's amazing. I wish everyone could see. Do you, have you thought you really of doing love the studio? Oh, it's, it's like You're unreal. So cute. I uh, have. Have you done a video showing people the studio? Uh, have we done? You this? need to We've do done that. some stuff. I think yeah. we'll do a full tour soon. We'll though. do a tour. You yeah. need to do that. Yeah, yeah it's pretty. It's, it's great. crazy. I'm you know, moving in here. I think you should. <laughs> she moved to it, Texas. Could you imagine? I, I'm dying to. It's. I love it here. I love Austin. I love it too. It's really. But you're great. so East Coast. Could you handle the slow? I'm pace? not. I hate the East Coast at this point. You know, the uh, world is taking tiring. a big shit. Yeah. Um, okay, let's do some Pajitsky effects. Um, do we have any voicemails, Zolo? So this is this is when you realize that you've been doing something stupid and wrong your whole <laughs> life. Okay. Um, for instance, this came from my husband and I at one point, we would share one phone charger for like years. <laughs> and then we're like, <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah, and then we're like, we can buy two. <laughs> Like shit like that your whole life that you just do wrong. That's a great idea. Yeah. Until yeah. somebody points it out to you. <laughs> yeah. All right. Do you have any, we have voice for that. Pajitsky effect. Hi, mommy and booth boys. Nothing like driving your kid to daycare when you look in your rear view and see them spitting up all over their brand new outfit. You then have to change your kid in the car or better yet realize that you forgot to pack an extra outfit, which happens to me all the time. Then I realize I can put a bib on her. This way, when we get to our destination, she's not covered in vom. So, yeah, put a bib where it fits. <laughs> Love you, jeans. Hot sauce is the best. Bibs. You don't Bibs just let your kids amazing. barf all over themselves. Yeah. Yeah, dipshit. Put a bib on. So crazy. <laughs> Do you know that I just started buying Kleenex? Period. Like just like a while ago, like I I exclusively thought toilet paper was what you use when you were sick. And I was like, I can just buy I could buy Kleenex too. Like, I can afford it now. Right. <laughs> or I don't have to blow my nose in my hand. Isn't that fucking crazy? Is there anything you've done recently where you remember like, oh my God? That happens to me a lot. Like I'm trying to think of a specific thing, but <sighs> I I don't do things for myself that I do for other people a lot. Yeah, that's very common. So same. Yeah. So that the Kleenex example is very, I get that. Like I don't, God. I don't, I don't buy things for myself. I mean, my underwear looks like it went through a Cuisinart. art. <laughs> my bras look like dog toys. I mean, I really uh. need to start. You know, I've been, I refresh the bras every six months. You got to the elastic. Yeah. I'm going to, uh, Yeah. I'm going to go to like someone to size me up and start. You got to. Yeah. Get those you get skinny now. You got to go do it. Yeah. And I have nice knockers. Yeah. Yeah. Good so I need you. to. <laughs> um, so <laughs> I got nice knockers. Yeah, good tits. <laughs> so, so I hate. Um, I don't like this fat model movement. Foddle. Fat bottles. <laughs> fat models. Um, and I've been saying this for a, a while because I, I think it's just here's why I don't. It's not that there are fat people in the world. It's not that. It's that I can sense that it's like a trend. Like these companies just pick up on these stupid marketing trends 
and like they sell it to us like it's progress but like bitch adidas doesn't really give a fuck about fat people. it's more the companies it's not the models you're upset yeah, with. yeah that's what i'm saying like it's, it's corporate america it's so exploitive that's like, that's what you're upset i get really that. the down syndrome model victoria's right. secret right like, there, there's such a need for that like in the marketplace we've right. all been demanding that progress right. nobody wants to masturbate to the down syndrome <laughs> <laughs> they are now but nobody wanted to like you're, they are now, they but are now. nobody wanted to. Yeah. I never knew I'd be attracted to that, but <laughs> woohoo! <laughs> yeah. Yeah, now I know. It's like, I, it's that. Like, it's the shut exploit. up. I know. Nobody wants that, really. Who's, yeah. Who's pushing for that? Um, so you were on Tim Dillon. <laughs> Talk about this because you got pulled off of TikTok. Is that right? I, I, always for this kind of stuff. Yeah, I get I get flagged so much <laughs> that I had to stop putting myself in the videos. Yeah. I just have to like, I can do the subtitle, like a mean sub mm -hmm. comment on the thing. Yeah. But if it's me being like, whoa, fuck this. They're like, yeah. mm, community guidelines. That's what I got today. Uh, today. <laughs> tell, okay, so what did you do? Community guidelines. <laughs> I put up a clip of... Um, I mean, you can play. Yeah, I put up the. Oh, play it. Can we play it? Uh, well, it's so, on my Instagram. Oh. It's fat. It's fat. Uh, what's it called? Fat something. Oh, it's right there. Yeah. Well, fat movement now. It's very interesting. <laughs> the fat activism. As people who've struggled with our weight, it's interesting to see now <laughs> it's gone the other way where fat people are okay. like threatening people I've on been social media. 330 pounds and no one should have been promoting me. <laughs> I. <laughs> I was disgusting <laughs> and should have been shot. I should have been hunted down and shot. I was not, I was an animal. I should have gotten help. Someone should have, someone should have gotten a net and fucking yeah. put me in a cage and help me. So... <laughs> But there's a movement now. Well, I needed move. I needed <laughs> a lot of movement because I was dying. What do you think and, of the pro fat? Well, movement? I went on and on and on for a while because it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I needed movement. I needed to move. Yeah, I was <laughs> dying. I was. <laughs> we laughed so hard about that for a while. I mean, the thing you're saying is really true. They're not they they don't give a fuck about fat people. They're trying to sell they're trying to sell to fat people because they know most of our country is fat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like I don't want to be represented. Like I don't want to see someone that looks like me <laughs> in the ad. The whole reason is I'm buying this so I can fool myself into thinking I'm better <laughs> than what you're showing me. That's the lie. That's what cosmetics are. That's what fashion is. It's the lie. Right. Don't fucking give me reality. <laughs> lie to me, bitch. <laughs> That's all it is. <sighs> it's, a, it's really, I mean, we talked about the Lizzo show. It's <laughs> Lizzo. What do you think about the Lizzo show? Do you mean Instagram Lizzo? Because no. I follow, what do you mean? Wait, oh, well, she has a new show out. Where on television? It's, it's Who's all watching that? Over. It's spread out. Wait, where is it? T show oh, me. it's a it's. She's looking for backup dancers. Oh, it's on Am Amazon, and um, and they, she's looking for backup dancers, and they're all auditioning. No, I gotta. Oh, watch this. you got. You're gonna be obsessed with. This. I gotta write this shit down, homie. Watch it. Talk about it because it's um. Oh my God. Tim's obsessed. <laughs> and so it's like she he wants to audition for. <laughs> <laughs> He's so funny. He is he fucking so should. funny. He, but you but, see him with but, a big wig. <laughs> but here's the thing he needs to come correct. Like he needs to come as really rehearsed, practice. I agree. And, and, and be so undeniably good. I that they have to cast him, and then when they don't, he can he can claim like gender discrimination, like that. But yeah. <laughs> 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 but with like, 
I think a tight black outfit with black stockings. Fuck and yeah. Big heel. Yeah. And so he just has to practice like rehearse and then mm -hmm. oh my God, he's so ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> I love watching men in dress like men Me dressed too. as women making fun of us. It's my favorite. And that's why I like when you do Matt so much. Are you doing Matt? Yeah. I um, love that. And I, I think now it's considered politically incorrect to dress as a um, a woman if you're a man to make fun of women. Yeah, it's all politically incorrect. I mean, <sighs> everything's wrong. <laughs> it's so wrong, it's right. I don't even know what's going on. I'm a lesbian dressing as a straight man and that's not okay. I don't, I don't know what's okay anymore. I'm a Wait, are you even, so here's what I was thinking too. Are you allowed to say you're a lesbian because Hold on, you're a, you're a person, you're a person with a vagina who likes other people with vaginas. You can't say you're a woman because what is a woman? That's the debate now. I'm gonna say whatever the fuck I want. I'm a lesbian who's attracted to women who have vaginas. And if anyone tells me to not say that, they can die. <laughs> but then the whole thing is like, are they women, like trans women? What? So that's the whole debate. <laughs> That's why people are getting their feathers ruffled because they're like, no, they're not trans women. They're just women. But I'm not. But I'm not. I'm personally and I have nothing wrong with it. Be whoever you are. I'm not attracted to trans women. <laughs> oh, my God. What's happening? <laughs> Wait. So, OK, so then you you wouldn't. Yeah. No, I'm attracted to, to like bio women, homegrown bio women. Yeah. But. I think trans women can be beautiful. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm just, I'm not attracted to You're not to attracted them. to trans. Like, Who's I'm like not really... attracted to really butch women, but I think really? some are gorgeous. I mean, amazingly yes. beautiful. I like the, I like I'm the one I'm not on, attracted on to. Orange them. is the New Black, that butch lady. She's like the older butchy. Which one's she's that? She's real butchy. She's got like the tats and like short black hair. Um, she's like in her 50s. I forget her name. We can look her up. Orange is, yeah, her. I love her. That's Leah Delaria. You know Leah. She's I don't one know of her. my good friends. Shut the front door. She's a comic. You have to talk to her. I would love to. I, she's fucking amazing. I she was the first her. gay comic on Johnny Carson. Shut the front door. I you need to that. talk to Leah. She's incredible. Do you know she's I a like famous her. jazz singer? Shut the fuck up. You need to have her on something. You need to I talk would love to her. To. Leah would, is amazing. I would love to. Let her she know. She is Leah. so fucking funny. She you really need to is. you need to talk to her at some point. And you know what I love about her? She just has a presence, like an essence that is other world. I, I'm telling Ethereal. you, she's one of the most amazing people you'll ever talk wow. to. I talk to her a lot. I'm I've been friends with her for 20 years. I love her. <gasps> yeah, she's gorgeous. She does too. stand up. I got I gotta get to know her. When I come to New York, maybe. Yeah, yeah. she's amazing. I'm, I will totally take get to two of you and take you. At, we'll go out to dinner. I like her very You'll much. love sitting and talking to her. She's now, had an incredible life. Che Diaz. <laughs> did you watch the new Sex? You know, I heard it's crazy. horrible. It's hor she, her character I, was horrible. I'm I sure heard she's it all about life. it that it's horrific. Yeah. But Leah's incredible. She's traveled <sighs> all like over the world and sang jazz. She's like incredible. Her voice is like, huh, huh, huh. like it's very soft and feminine, her jazz voice. You need to listen to her. She's amazing. Now she's interesting because she totally is like, whatever, you know, you're like, what's your gender? What, what and she's she old school. She's like, fuck that shit. Like yeah. she's old school. See, like, don't tell me what to say. That's what I'm getting from yeah. the older guy. No, older, but like yeah, people she's my older. age she's, that are gay. She's older than us. But yeah. all my gay friends who are like in their 40s, 50s are like, fuck your pronouns. No, she's this is really stupid. like that. Yeah. Like we're gay. We're just all gay. Shut the fuck up. Shut up. Oh, I feel like you guys are tougher than this generation of like crybaby pussies. Yeah. Well, she's in, she's in even I like, like way past me. She's like old school, old school dyke. I love old yeah. school dykes. Yeah. And she's butch i love that i mean she makes me look like a fucking princess yeah <laughs> i love old school butch lesbos and i you know what i love a lot too are old school new york gay men oh yeah like like rpc gay like the leather oh, the guy who still too. smokes i love those guys yeah yeah and like just so fucking gay and he's like back in the village when yeah. i was in the 70s blowing guys and you're like yeah. oh, honey me. when i was oh you should have gone to Stonewall when they came for us. We ran. 
Someone's going to try to cancel me from that. I hope so. I want to be canceled. I'm exhausted. Well, I'll tell you something. Is that, um, but you'll just sell more tickets. I know. Let them come after you. I hope so. It's great for business. Yeah. (laughs) I remember one time they tried to cancel me. For Uh, what? It's it's always, you always try to get canceled for things you don't even think of. It's like, you're like, oh, that joke's going to get me canceled. Like in in whatever you're doing. You're like, that that was the one. It's never that. It's never that. What did you say? Like, what was it? It was like, I was talking about my Indian stepdad, who was my, (laughs) my fucking family. Right. Your family. Shitheads. Yeah. And I have three Indian stepsisters. So guess what? (laughs) Fuck face is like. This is my family asshole. Like my walls smelled of curry and like <laughs> I grew up looking at Ganesh posters. So don't fucking come at me, bitch. These are my this is my family. Um, yeah, I said some stupid joke in a special. And I remember at one point I like it blew up and, you know, India was mad at me. The whole country. India, I, I swear I, to God. You are hilarious. Like, how did that I love even... that you just said India was mad. It's the <laughs> biggest country. In the... <laughs> they did not like me that day on Twitter. And um, I get, I got a, I think my manager at the time was like, oh, so N- NBC <laughs> India would like to know if you want to comment. And I was like, fuck you. No, I don't want to say yeah. a goddamn thing. Yeah. I don't, what am I, I going to say? What am I going to say about this? Tell like, them to go fuck a cow. Yeah. <laughs> It's just silly. It's just silly. Yeah, I love that I, people on TikTok went off on me. Most people loved it, but people on TikTok went off on me today because they said that they're they're very upset about what I said about myself, (laughs) about about my weight. Oh, about you. Like, what you can't, you, I'm talking about myself. You can't fat shame yourself. I'm allowed to t- say I'm an animal if that's how I felt. <laughs> I feel great now. It is better, I feel isn't great. it? Yes, but w- don't tell me what I can and can't say about myself. And yeah, you know what? Crazy. If you're getting upset about it, it's because you hate your own body. This is what I say on stage all the time. Mm-hmm. I'm upsetting you because you're projecting your yeah. shit onto me. 100%. Go to a fucking therapist and deal with it. It <laughs> has nothing to do with me. 100%. But that's what's happening now is everybody's projecting their own stuff right. into the, the world. Like, well, you can't say that because it hurts me. It's like, you need to go on, into therapy. Exactly. Yeah. You have so many problems. Yeah, this you hate your problem. body. You you just got on the scale this morning and you're upset you gained a pound and a half. I know. I Stop know. eating carbs, bitch. <laughs> it has nothing to do with me. Well, and I have to say, like, listen, I, I'm on a fat tear lately. <laughs> and it's only because I am I am approaching, you know, I'm past middle age going into the next place in life. And you're like, you can't be fat. You cannot and and they can lie to you and say, oh, it's fine. It's fine to be overweight. There's no health consequence. Oh, bullshit. Yes, there is. You don't I see- had them. See? And you- I'm an older mom. And I want to be around for my kids. Me too. And man. I want to feel okay. And I need to because I travel so much and my schedule's so crazy. You're, it's tough for you. And I'm not judging. God, I am the most sensitive person to myself and to other people. It's a horrible problem to have no and it's the worst thing i ever dealt with and it's and i i feel sick for people you know i joke around but of course i mean come on it's 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 the worst addiction i i have i'm an addict I love food. and it's right and it's the hardest thing i ever had to deal with and i deal with it on a daily basis from the second i get up it is horrible so what do you do when every time you want to eat something i i have to make decisions and i have to think about it and i i just i think it through do you I think feel your feelings? Do you go like, what's the, cause I, I too have been like, cause I, I, I like to pacify too. So I have yeah. to be like, okay, wait, what is that? Oh, is that anxiety? Wait, what do you mean? I carry about? around a dildo <laughs> and instead of, <laughs> instead of eating cake, I'll suck on a dick, a fake dick. I have to go in the bathroom when I go in a restaurant. I have Stop, to just. I had Botox done today. I can't <laughs> laugh anymore. I'm getting a headache because it just kicked in. I think I did it this morning. <laughs> I love you. Do you do I, you like watching dick sucks? You've yes. mentioned this before. Yes. How fascinating. Yeah. Well, because I'm an eater. So I like oh. watching anything go in the mouth. But um <gasps> That's so funny. And did you don't because sometimes I don't like when they make the girl choke because I'm like it feels demeaning. I used to her. like it more. I think I'm getting over that. What are you into now? Like, no, I mean, I like, well, I, I mean, I like toys and I like, you know, 
Yeah. I like wearing strap on. I mean, I like How fun. Yeah. There's got to be a whole learning curve to that. No. Like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's trial and error, lot. you know. I mean, I, I had, a, you know, I wore one a lot at family events and stuff and just would <laughs> See, just stick them in my family members and all about. kinds of people. Yeah. This, how did you get, I love that your sensibility is so old school. You and I are that way where. Uh, I know. That's why I laugh at you. I laughed punch. at you for set years. But our because, acts are like, no, go for it. Set up and punch, bitch. Don't get up there and just tell me the fucking weather. Well, who, yeah. who influenced you? Well, don't you? go half ass also. Got to just go for go it, for whether it. you get the laugh or not. It's mm -hmm. really. Really, just take the risk. Take the risk. That's I mean, what it I, I, is. Old school. I was into the. I mean, the, who do you love? Who did you oh emulate? God. I mean, honestly, I was more into like the Carol Burnett, Lucille Ball, I old school. Yeah. Oh, God. I love Phyllis Diller. Me I too. love Carol Burnett. I mean, Joan yeah. River. They, those were love my idols. Joan. Those were my idols. Me too. Because they, Joan, went for the. I. I she went for that it. bitch. I saw Joan Rivers two years before she died. And she was saying crazier shit <laughs> than any of us. She was not afraid, my friend. That's what I mean. And she never apologized. Never. And she went for it. You'd be like, what the fuck did she just say? Mm -hmm. And and also the, you know, the old Sarah and I live. I'm talking old. Me too. The first, like where they would do stuff where you'd be like, what just happened? Anyone who took, I mean, oh, Gilbert who just passed. Yeah. I mean, the people who would go I to the point him. where you were like, Oh my God, did that person just say what I think they I said? Love that. Anyone who shocks the audience and kind of makes people like gasp and go, you know, people that. Can I tell you something? You just saying that just got me so physically excited. I think there's some, that's what it is. And I think because we've had to tamp it down for society, the comics are like, come on, man, I let me out. Let me out. Like, I know. I'm fucking ready, bros. And I think that's why my husband is just killing the road right now because that motherfucker says it. And people are just like, yeah, I know. say something. Mother like they want to hear truth. We're so sick of it. But well, that's what's exciting is saying the thing. Saying the, the, comic, thing. the comics that are trying to silence other comics are Yo. making me crazy. <laughs> Fuck you. You're out of the club. I know. What is going on? There's a land. handful that are like, whoa, what are you doing? Yeah, those pussies won't be here in a few years. I know. They won't. I was just telling that to Sarah. Pussies. I was saying that. It, they, they, you can't do it. It's not going to work. It's interesting. It, the pendulum is coming back. I know. Tom's making me laugh. He was making me laugh when I was watching him on social media. I'm like, oh boy, he's, he's, wow. This is amazing. I know. Because you can't silence us. We didn't get into this for that reason alone. I mean, I was silenced my whole life. Yeah. It's like, that's why I started doing this. I, I felt like a caged per Like, I, this is why I got into this. Like, to just say my truth. I was always the truth teller. I was always told to be quiet. Like, that's why I do this. No. John it, Rivers, too. Here's what I love about that bitch. She would say the thing that everybody was thinking about celebrities, about pop culture, yeah. about everything happening in the zeitgeist. And she was physically very strong. Yeah. I remember I like I hugged her, I got to meet her, and her arms were just jacked. Like she yeah. was not a frail old lady. Yeah. She was in good shape. So yeah. when she got killed essentially in the oh. hospital, it was like, oh, are you kidding me? Ugh, and Phyllis Diller, who else too. Was you? Who else were you? Who I did, love Phyllis. I love Roseanne Barr. I, I loved her stand-up. I saw her and flipped out. I flipped out from her stand-up years ago. Amazing talent. Yeah. yeah. And talk about courage and, and really speaking for like what women go through. Yeah, and yeah it just it sucks because people get canceled and now you, you can't, you know. Yeah, I saw her and Rosie at a theater in the city like 15 years ago, and I I died from Roseanne's stand up. I was dying laughing. Yeah, she's amazing. It was incredible. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Anyway, it'll come back. Um. Anyway, let's do one more Pajitsky effect, and then we'll let you go. I'm sure you've got lots of brisket, um, to eat here in Texas. Are you at the Netflix as a joke festival? Yeah. Oh, good. Me too. Oh, you. good. Uh, let's see. Hi, mommy. This is Tyler from Montana. I'm calling because I had a Pajitsky effect the other day. Uh, I always go in to take a piss in the middle of the night, and uh, I could turn on the light so I don't miss the toilet, and it's blinding. And uh, then I realize that uh, I'm just being completely talked. I can just sit down to piss and not have to aim at all. Um, yeah, let me know what you think. Piss on me, beat me, and hot sauce is the best. Wow, that is a pretty neat revelation that you can sit down to urinate. 
instead of standing. Hmm. <laughs> That's the most fascinating. <laughs> Jessica's not impressed. It's okay. I think he just wanted to be a part of it. Yeah. He seems like a nice guy. He's a nice guy. But for yeah. him, that was like an epiphany. Yeah, that was, I, I mean... I really, um, if that's the most interesting thing that's happened to him, he needs to get a life. Does, I, I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, can I tell you, it's the little things that, that I think add up uh, uh, the most. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. I love you so much. I love you so Thank much. Thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to come here. You're very busy. See Jessica Curse on live. Is there anything else you would like to plug before I vomit? I think I... Are you going to vomit? Oh, no, I'm just kidding. It um, I would love people to go on my TikTok um, at Jessica Kirsten because right. I, pros, I post, post, I post, <laughs> I post, I post um, crowd work videos <gasps> every day, which is something I different. Love it. And so it's Jessica Kirsten on TikTok and Jesse Kirsten, J E S S Y K I R S O N on Instagram. So follow me. That would be great. Do follow her. Um, her your Instagram feed is hilarious. <laughs> Thank you. And, you know, her motto is always be silly. And yeah. you know, I love the videos of you on airplanes <laughs> where you're just. <laughs> now I can post them like, again. I used to. <laughs> like you'll make crazy faces next to sleeping people. Now it's I can the post best. them because you don't have to wear a mask. But I had <laughs> I couldn't post them for so long because of the mask thing because it's all my facial expressions. Yeah. I love when you do that stuff. So yeah. silly. Anyway. I didn't wear a mask yesterday and I got a lot of looks on the plane. Oh, right. You can you can choose not to now. Yeah, correct. <laughs> like with their mask on. So I just, you know, coughed in their eye. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck them. It's another thing. I get to make my own decision now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm boosted. I had it three months ago. Um, and I need a break from the mask for a minute. And that's my choice. It's your choice. Your body. <laughs> Do what you want. In Texas, it, there was never COVID. It never happened here. I know. So no one even care. got it here. Nope. I know. Not really. Yeah. You stepped over the line. Oh, I Texas think they got it. People got <laughs> I think it. they you went rampant. And then it just <laughs> burned out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shoot that COVID. All right, guys. I love you so much. I Thank love you, you for Thank, being here. Thank you for having me on. You're, You're amazing. amazing. <gasps> 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 All right, guys. Until next time, stay cool, moms. Bye. Hi, mommy. Thank you for watching that episode. Did you like what you see? I hope you did. So why don't you subscribe? Just click the subscribe button and, you know, hit the notification bell so you can get notified. And also, why don't you watch another video? What? Watch one of these. You know what I'm saying? Like right here, down there, whatever. There's so much stuff, bro. I make these all the time for you to watch. That's why I'm here. I love you. <laughs>